the Type 97 torpedo bomber was called the Kate. Now, the Kates were divided into two different missions. You had the Kates that delivered huge bombs from high above. And then you had the Kates that delivered torpedoes low on the water. One of the challenges facing the Japanese was how to drop torpedoes from the air into such a shallow harbor. The Americans at Pearl Harbor thought, well, we won't have a torpedo attack here because torpedoes will go 50 feet, so, you know, we're safe. Over and over again, they were told that the harbor at Pearl was too shallow for the use of the aerial torpedo. But the Japanese naval engineers were pretty sharp. Well, the torpedo bomber Cates had specially adapted torpedoes with these plywood wooden fins. And once the torpedo hit the water, the box fin would break off, and it would cause a slight delay, which allowed the nose to come up. So it kept the torpedo from sinking into the mud. These particular torpedoes were incredibly accurate. They stayed pretty close to the surface. And because of that, their impact was devastating. Oklahoma takes most of her damage on port side. The water quickly overwhelms the ship, and the ship begins to capsize. I could look up and see the ship coming over. When you see that much decking and stuff coming at you, you're going to have to make a move. It would have hit me if I hadn't swam away. The mass kept it from going all the way over when it hit the dirt on the bottom of the bay. It just settled right there. So we were looking at the bottom of the starboard side. As soon as I closed that big hatch, I knew a lot of them were trapped down there. I couldn't get out. The man closing the hatches, I imagine he disappeared as soon as the ship started capsizing. There was no way to go anywhere else. I couldn't see anything. Ship turned over, water started coming in. There was a big spring-loaded hatch there. And when they dropped that hatch down, there wasn't no way you could get out. We were there. That was it. <laughs> 